Set the timer dial at 60 minutes on the regular time cycle. Set the temperature switch to cotton or regular heat. Get yourself a mirror and put it under the dryer like this. Turn the dryer on. This is how the heating cycle should work. The igniter glows for 20 to 30 seconds. The heat from the igniter opens the contacts in the flame sensor, turning the igniter off and opening the gas valve. As the gas flows by the still red igniter, it is ignited. The gas valve will continue open until the operating thermostat cycles off. When the operating thermostat cycles off, the gas valve is turned off, stopping the flow of gas. This operation will be repeated over and over until the time on the timer expires and the dryer shuts off. Set the timer dial at 60 minutes on the regular time cycle. Set the temperature switch to cotton or regular heat. Get yourself a mirror and put it under the dryer like this. Turn the dryer on. Let the dryer run for at least 20 minutes. If after that you don't see the igniter glowing at all, the problem could be on any of the following parts. Make sure to disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. We're going to be checking for continuity and we don't need electricity for this test. Let me show you how to check the thermal high limit right without taking the complete dryer apart. You will need a Torx T15 screwdriver to remove the screw from the top panel. After removing the screws, lay the control panel on top of the dryer. Take a reading with your own meter between the brown wire on terminal 1 on the start switch and the brown wire on terminal C on the timer. If the needle moves to the 0 ohms, the thermal high limit right is good. If the needle doesn't move from the infinity marking, the thermal high limit right is bad. Let me show you how to replace it if it's bad. Install the control panel back in place. Remove the top panel holding screws and remove the top panel. Remove these two screws and bend back the complete controls assembly back a little bit like this. Here you can see the two brown wires going to the control panel. Remove the wires from the bad thermal high limit and replace it with a new one and put the wires back in place. Install the two screws on the controls assembly and install the top panel. And that was how to test and replace the thermal high limit right. Warning: Before you use a dryer, make sure that the dryer is exhausting properly to the outside or the thermal high limit right may blow out again too soon. Put air circulation is a major cause for the thermal high limit to fail. Disconnect the igniter from the wire harness. Set your multi-tester to RX1K ohms. Set your own meter test leads like this. This is the easier way to make contact with the terminals that you're going to test. If the needle moves close to the zero mark, the igniter should be okay. If the needle doesn't move at all, if it stays on the left, the igniter is bad and you will need to replace it. If the igniter checks okay, reconnect the igniter wire harness. Then you will have to check all the parts in the circuit until you find a part that is bad, not allowing the igniter to glow. 
Warning, replacing the igniter is not hard to do. The hardest part is making sure that you don't break the new igniter during the installation. Practice installing the igniter with the bad one before installing the new one. Disconnect the igniter, unscrew these screws, and remove the burner assembly. Remove the two holding screws in the combustion chamber. Disconnect the wires from the flame sensor. To remove the combustion chamber, grab it and slide it forward, pick it up by the back end, and start taking it out. Practice removing and installing the combustion chamber until you're sure you know how to take it out and put it in without touching the igniter. Remove the bad igniter. I suggest that you remove and install the bad igniter a couple times until you're confident that you know how to install the new one without breaking it. They are very expensive. Never touch the blue part of the igniter. Grab it by the white part or by the bracket. Set the new igniter in place. Hold it with your left hand. Don't let go until you secure it with a screw because if you drop it it's going to break install the burner assembly with one screw temporarily this is just to protect the igniter until you install the combustion chamber set the combustion chamber in place like this just make sure you don't touch the igniter as long as you don't touch the igniter, you don't have any chance of breaking it. So be careful here, okay? Remove the burner assembly screw and remove the burner assembly. Just be careful and make sure you don't touch the igniter. Install the two holding screws on the combustion chamber. Install the burner assembly. Again, nice and easy, try not to touch the igniter. Unscrew in the two holding screws. Connect the wires to the flame sensor. It doesn't matter which one you put on the top, the white or the purple. Connect the igniter and you're done. All you have to do now is put the dryer together. Warning. Replacing the igniter is not hard to do. The hardest part is making sure that you don't break the new igniter during the installation. Practice installing the igniter with the bad one before installing the new one. Disconnect the wires from the flame sensor. Disconnect the igniter wire harness. Remove the two burner holding screws. To remove the burner, lift the burner front until it touches the top of the combustion chamber. This will prevent hitting the igniter when you take the burner out. Warning, be careful with sharp edges, they cut like razor blades. Stick your hand in and hold the igniter by the wing. Stick the point of a skinny Phillips screwdriver into this hole to spread open the igniter holder and pull the bad igniter out. Use the bad igniter to practice installing it before you try to install the new one. Always handle the igniter by the white part, never by the dark part. Grab the igniter by the wing and set it in place. Make sure you don't bang it or drop it or you will break it. Take the screwdriver, spread the holder open, just enough to get the igniter in. Don't overdo it. When installing the burner, make sure that the top of the burner is touching the top of the combustion chamber. This way, you make sure that you don't hit the igniter and break it. Set it in place, connect the holding screws, Connect the igniter harness, connect the wires to the flame sensor, and that's it.
That's how you replace the igniter. Let me show you how to check the flame sensor for continuity. First thing you need to do is remove one of the wires. Set your multi-tester to RX1K ohms. Connect the ohm meter test leads across the two terminals on the flame sensor. The reading should be zero ohms. That means that the flame sensor is okay. If the needle doesn't move, the flame sensor is bad and you will need to replace it. If the flame sensor is okay, connect the wires and go to the next part you need to check. If it's no good, remove the wires. Remove the flame sensor holding screw. and remove the flame sensor. Grab the new flame sensor and set it in place. Screw in the flame sensor holding screw by hand. Then tighten it with the screwdriver. Install the two wires to the flame sensor. That's it. That's how you test and replace the flame sensor. In this video we're going to check the safety thermostat, the control inlet thermostat, the drum outlet thermostat, and the trimmer thermostat. To check the safety thermostat, remove one of the wires and take a reading with your ohm meter between the two terminals. The reading should be zero ohms. If the needle doesn't move, in your multi-tester, the thermostat is bad. To check the control in the thermostat, remove the purple wire and take a reading with your own meter between the two larger terminals on the thermostat like this. The reading should be zero ohms. If the needle doesn't move in your multi-tester, the thermostat is bad. To check the drum outlet thermostat, remove the orange wire and take a reading with your own meter between the two larger terminals on the thermostat like this. The reading should be zero ohms. If the needle doesn't move in your multi-tester, the thermostat is bad. To check the trimmer thermostat, remove one of the wires and take a reading with your own meter between the two terminals. The reading should be zero ohms. If the needle doesn't move, in your multi-tester, the thermostat is bad. Remember, just because the thermostat checks OK with your own meter, that doesn't mean that will regulate properly. It only means that electricity will flow through it to the next component. With the pass of time, and depending on how much you use the dryer, the contacts inside of the thermostats will burn out. This will cause the heat source in the dryer to work erratically. When this happens, it is time to replace the thermostat. Thermostats are regulating switches to regulate the flow of electricity. They open and close at a predetermined temperature. Most thermostats are checked the same way. To replace the safety thermostat, remove the wires, the holding screw, and remove the thermostat. Install the new thermostat. Install the holding screw and connect the wires. It doesn't matter which one goes where. It's only two wires to the thermostat. To replace the control in the thermostat you will have to push in the holding tab so it comes through the hole and take it right out. Replace the wires one by one from the old thermostat to the new one. Take the new thermostat and push in the tabs so it fits through the hole. And put it in place. Go to the other side. Use a flat screwdriver to spread the tabs. 
This way, the tap will not fit through the hole and the thermostat is secure. To replace the trimmer thermostat, remove the wires, remove the holding screw, and remove the thermostat. Install the new thermostat. Install the holding screw. And install the wires. It doesn't matter which one goes where. It's only two wires to the thermostat. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. We're going to check for continuity and we don't need electricity for this test. Set the timer dial at 60 minutes on the time dry cycle. To check the timer you will need to remove the controls panel. To do that you will need a torched T15 screwdriver to remove the screws. After removing the screws grab the control panel and lay it on top of the dryer. Remove the red wire from terminal B on the timer. Take a reading with your ohm meter between terminal B and C on the timer. The reading should be zero ohms. If the reading is infinity, the timer is bad and you will need to replace it. To check the timer motor for continuity, remove the black wire from terminal C on the timer. Take a reading between that wire and the black wire on terminal T on the timer. The reading should be between 2 and 3000 ohms. If the reading is infinity, you should replace the complete timer assembly. To replace the timer, you will need to remove the knob. Then with a flat screwdriver, lift this tab and turn the timer counterclockwise. And take it right out with all the wires on it. Set the new timer in. And turn it clockwise until it snaps in place. Put the old timer next to the new timer and start replacing the wires one by one. Put the knob back on the timer and you're done checking and replacing the timer. If the dry heat's okay for the first 10 or 20 minutes. Then after that, you get no heat, and the only thing you get is the igniter to come on. Let it run for a couple cycles. If you keep doing this, your problem could be on the gas valve, gas valve coils or the gas supply to the dryer. When the igniter glows this is an indication that everything is okay up to the gas valve. With the drum and front panel removed, now we could work on replacing the gas valve coils. The first thing you're going to do is remove the wires from the coils. Don't worry about mixing them because they are different size plugs. Next you're going to remove the two holding screws on the holding plate and remove the holding plate. Remove the coils one at a time. Remove the one with two terminals first and install the new one. Then remove the one with three terminals and install the new one. This way you put them on the right place and you don't mix them. Make sure they're nice and straight and install the holding plate. 
Make sure that the nipples on the coils are aligned with the holes on the holding plate. Install the two screws on the holding plate. Connect the two wire harnesses to the two coils. Make sure the connection is nice and tight. As you could see, we didn't have to disconnect any gas lines. We did the repair right on the floor in front of the dryer. Now all you have to do is put the dryer back together and try it out. This repair works 99% of the times. If you're still having the same problem, then you will need to replace a complete gas valve assembly and that could be expensive.